with the Go MRI Man. Spread the knowledge. Motivate the people. Hi everyone, welcome back to MRI Man's channel. My name is Gabby and today we're going to show you some tips and tricks on how to find a vein. And we actually graduated from phlebotomy school about 12 years ago and so we've got some pretty good experience in this so here we go so before you get started if your patient tells you that they get lightheaded or they faint then you might want to lay them down for this okay so next make sure you have your supplies ready got to set everything up before you get started that way it's there when you need it and make sure you know where your trash can is and of course make sure that you know where your sharps container is before you get started because you don't want to be looking for it right after you have you know the needle in your hand okay so first thing you do you're gonna put the tourniquet on the arm and take a look you can feel with your finger and the vein should feel it should be bouncy you should be able to feel it if it's bouncy even if you don't see it and you you can you can still feel it sometimes but not see it and after some time you learned you learn what a vein feels like now if a patient tells you that their right arm is good and their left isn't and you look at the right but you don't see anything then just feel free to ask them if you can look at the other arm because sometimes they get mixed up and you try the right arm and you miss and you call someone for help and then they say oh they had a huge one on the other arm and, and you know then you just look like you don't know what you're doing so so always look at both arms. If you don't see anything in the first arm, look at the other arm. And make sure you tell your patient to make a fist. They can pump their fist. That just gets the blood flowing into the arm. If you still don't see anything, a good trick to do is to have the patient hold their arm down by their side. And that just lets all the blood come down into the arm and let's say you still don't see anything if the patient's cold you can give them a heat pack you can put a heat pack in the area sometimes if you don't see anything up here you will have to move down but make sure that you move the tourniquet down also so if you're going down in the forearm make sure you move the tourniquet down the tourniquet should always be a few inches above where you're going to stick the patient so if I'm going to go for this vein here this would be a pretty good place to put my tourniquet if I put my tourniquet up here this might not fill up as good and then make sure that when you do find your vein that you check where it goes because sometimes they're really curvy and if you put your needle in and you don't follow it with your needle you're just going to go right through it so this vein's pretty straight definitely try to stick to the straighter veins because they're just easier with your needle to just go in straight and you're in now when patients don't have any good veins up in the arms we have to move down you look at the forearm you don't see anything here you got to move down to the hand this one a lot of people are really nervous about it but you just have to you know take your time take a really good look at it let it fill up if it's not filling up like I said put their arm down by their side let the blood come down and the veins should start filling up sometimes they hold their hand too tight when you're looking at their hand it kind of makes kind of makes the uh, the vein disappear so you kind of you know you got to tell them to not squeeze their hands so tight when you are looking at the hand veins because that just helps them pop up a little bit more 
and these you have to be a little bit more careful because they are more superficial and underneath you know there's a lot of bone and and it's very sensitive in this area so make sure that when you go in the hand you're going at a lesser angle so let's say you're going up in the fore in the arm or the forearm you know you'd use about a 15 to 30 degree angle but here maybe even less because you gotta you gotta make sure that you get your needle right in there without digging into the patient's hand all right so now we're going to look at these veins right here these are your last resort veins because it's a very sensitive area these veins are usually really really small and they're not in they're not very straight sometimes they've got real, a lot of curves and they're just so so delicate and this area right here is just so sensitive and there's not a lot of tissue here so that's where you have to be really careful but if you do if you do want to go in this area then just make sure you use the smallest needle possible always in this area and and for these types of veins just know that you can't usually you can't advance all the way this is not really an area for IVs it's more of an area for for using a regular needle if you just need to give administer something or you need to draw blood this is something you would do with a butterfly and make sure that once you're in the vein you got to hold it really steady to make sure that um, you don't hurt the patient because that's a very sensitive area right there a lot of patients sometimes they'll tell you I have rolling veins and you kind of get a little freaked out and you get scared and you don't want to do it but don't worry rolling veins you can still get them so the trick to rolling veins is that you have to anchor your veins sometimes you can just anchor it with one finger one with your thumb and anchor it down but sometimes with rolling veins that isn't enough like if you see this one if I go in with the needle with in, in this vein right here and I'm just holding it down this way it looks like it's just going to roll like my needles just gonna push it to the side so this type of vein you might want to anchor it differently so that you can hold it on both sides you can hold it like on both sides before you go in hold it down and send your needle in and you can see it's it still rolls but if you anchor it down on both sides then you should be able to do it you can hold it I mean there's so many different ways that you can hold the vein down or maybe sometimes you just need a a tighter grip with your thumb to get the needle in there And there are certain areas where you'll, you'll notice that the veins roll more than others. So, of course, try to, if I see this vein and it comes all the way down here, and I see right here that it's really rolly, then I would probably start down here. And that way he can use his fist to kind of hold it in place also. One thing that I like to tell my patients to do sometimes is to actually grab on to the the arm of the table where I'm drawing their blood or where I'm starting their IV they can just grab on without making their grip too tight to where their vein just just gets you know so tight that it disappears on him though he's got great veins so, <laughs> so we don't have that problem but sometimes people straighten you know they make a fist and their their veins are just flattened out and you don't really want that so make sure that you know if they can grab onto something that's usually a really good thing with the hand veins so one last tip when you are going to finally go into the vein and you know your angle you're going in the vein you know which angle you're going to use you know which direction you can feel your vein and 
everything's ready to go. The next tip is don't go in too fast or too slow because if you go in really fast you kind of can lose control and and you don't know where you're going to end up you just go in really fast and you know that can hurt the patient and also going too slow it can be really painful also just going in really really slow so just have a nice nice quick speed and the patient should barely even feel it all right everyone so thanks for tuning in i hope that this helped you guys um, feel free to comment and um, ask any questions that you may have hopefully this helps you guys so we'll see you in the next video also we're going to be making another video of the hands-on iv how to start an iv and we'll show the whole process subscribe